ABS systems are immensely effective in road cars, but what happens when you turn it off? Is the difference really that big? Today we've set out a few tests to show you just what can go wrong and how big those differences are. And I'm going to drive the same car on the same surface, both with and without ABS. And to be honest, the result really surprised me. This is a new series on the Driven Channel where we do fun experiments in cars, all in the name of science. ABS is actually really clever in the fact that it extracts almost the maximum braking potential from the tires whilst not relying on the driver to control the grip. I'm a pro racing driver and many of the race cars I've driven like Formula One cars or Radicals don't have ABS. But despite not having ABS, you can actually brake slightly more effectively than with ABS. It's called threshold braking and it's where you aim to press the brake pedal as hard as possible but while staying just below the threshold at which the tyre begins to lock up. But the important difference here is that on a track you do many many laps straight after each other. So you know the turn and you know the grip level. But what about on the road? If you're taking a turn you often haven't driven it before or if you have you don't know the exact conditions at that point in time. So ABS replicates a pro driver but on any surface in any condition irrespective of the driver's skill. It's very clever so let me show you how it works. Here we have a simple test to work out the difference in pure braking performance. So I'm going to get up to 70 miles an hour and hit the brakes at these cones. 70, there we go, 70, 70, 70, 70, and brake. Ugh. The car stopped incredibly quickly, was controlled, and I didn't need to put any steering input to correct the car or anything like that. From 70 miles an hour, the car actually stopped in just 45 meters. But let's take a look at that in slow motion. At this point here, I slam on the brakes. You can see the brake pressure applied gradually until the wheel locks up. Now, the ABS system has wheel speed sensors on each of the wheels, which will now sense an unusually fast deceleration. This is because a wheel locking up will slow down far quicker than the car possibly could. So at this point, if the wheel speed goes from 70 miles an hour to zero in a quarter of a second or so, the car will know that a lockup is about to happen. So after some clever computer work, the hydraulic brake system releases the brake. This allows the car to catch up and begin to slow the car effectively again. And you can see from this that the car does this over and over again, up to 15 times a second, until the car is slowed down in a controlled way. Now, here's the fun. Let's do the same thing with the ABS turned off. So we actually Googled it and a very trustworthy man uh, on a forum somewhere said that we do need to take out a specific fuse. So that's what we're gonna do here to the little MX-5. Uh, which one was it? I hope this doesn't do something else. <laughs> How much do you guys reckon not having the ABS on is gonna add? I reckon about 10 meters. I think you're gonna take out that tripod. Callum, how much is that tripod worth? About 200 quid. There was another issue though. We took a guess at where the car would end up and put a camera in place to capture it, but our calculations were pretty wrong. And now just watch this. 70, that's perfect, 70, and break. Oh my God. And this actually shows a key benefit of ABS perfectly. As the tires are locked up, I had zero steering. Even though the wheels were turned, the car carried on going in a straight line. However, I instinctively got off the brakes and you do this a lot in a race car after a lockup. And then the tires began rolling again and the car turned. And because of this, I was able to just about miss the camera. And this is all because a wheel can only turn the car if it is rolling. Tire smoke anyone? It added 20 meters on. I stopped at 66, whereas it was 45 before, which is just mad. I didn't think it would make that much difference. No, nor me. 70, 70, 70, and brake. Oh, 67.68 meters. Again, it added more than another 20 meters onto the stopping distance from 70 miles an hour. That's over 50%, which is just absolutely incredible. The other thing is that the car is out of control 
even though I was traveling in a perfectly straight line when I was approaching the braking point, as the car started to decelerate, it actually started to slide and I completely had zero control in it. So this is exactly what ABS aims to do, provide the maximum braking whilst retaining the ability to still turn the car. So let's put that to the test in our curve braking test. I'm going to be getting on the brakes here at this cone and trying to make it around this corner. 65, 65, turn and brake. And it's just amazing, you can still turn. Granted, it isn't slowing down as quickly as it would do in a straight line because it needs to turn as well, but it's doing exactly what I'm asking it to do. Well, it's gonna be really hard in this test now that I've taken out the fuse and we don't have ABS, is not to counter steer, not to put any opposite lock into the steering because that is my natural reaction. To 65, turn and... Okay, and as you can see there, I just went absolutely straight on. With this shot, you can really see how ABS helps turn a car. However, when the tires are locked up, the car just goes straight on. So I think one of the best ways to demonstrate how good ABS is and how it really relates to the real world is in a braking lane change. So imagine you're driving along and a tractor pulls out in front of you while you're driving and you have to swerve and brake to avoid the tractor. So you can see there that with the ABS, with the computer turning the braking on and off, I'm still able to turn at this point. And to add some jeopardy to this test, we've invited along one of our motoring journalist friends. Now I just have to get the car stopped and turned all without the use of ABS. Oh Richard, I'm worried for you. <laughs> Little hamster. Three, two, one, brake. Richard, no! Oh dear. Richard, no! I can see him lying on the floor. <laughs> it's a sad day. Maybe I can get a job now. You know what? It, it's so natural for me to, like in a situation like that, come up off the brakes and try and regain some control. So ABS enables the car to stop quicker, make a corner whilst braking, avoiding a stray Richard Hammond. Oh, and it saves the tires too. Just look at these flat spots. If you want to find out how no ABS and this supercar compares to ABS and this Ferrari, check out this video here.